Hey y'all. So I imagine that I am not the only one that is on this Facebook Live with me today who woke up this morning at 4 a.m. Pacific time to an earthquake. We had quite a shaker and it just kind of kept going on and on and on. And it was really difficult after the earthquake this morning to get back to sleep. And I, I was having this dialogue with God and I'm like, oh no, oh my gosh, at 4 a.m. or at 5 a.m., how am I gonna get back to sleep? You know, I've slept long enough that I could get up, but I know all the things that I have to do today, so I don't wanna get up. <laughs> and yet an earthquake, and this is not the first time in the past few weeks that we have had an early morning earthquake. But an earthquake, especially like this one that was a 6.4, <clears throat> you know, it's really difficult. It's jarring to go and just roll over and go back to sleep, um, in part because you're wondering if that's it. <laughs> um, are there going to be aftershocks and then there were some aftershocks and all that kind of stuff. Is, is it going to be okay? And if you've already had a few hours of sleep, then it's even harder to get back to sleep. But if you're like me and you actually did have problems <laughs> getting back to sleep, I did manage to get back to sleep around 5.30 and slept for another uh, little bit um, because I just refused <laughs> to get up at 4 a.m. Um, but the truth was that it kind of got me thinking about how that is similar to some other things that have been going on because in, its, in a way, the COVID crisis and all the things has been like an earthquake of sorts. It's, it's been something that's just shaken us up. And what's worse, like that earthquake from this morning, it goes on and on and on and on. And it just seems to not ever go away. And we have aftershocks after aftershocks, you know, well, you're, you're going through your day and um, murder hornets. <laughs> you're going through your day and earthquake. You're going through your day and so-and-so's mother died or something. I mean, it has had implications. June says she never went back to sleep. <laughs> I bet you're tired, June. I'm so sorry. Um, but the truth is, you know, we, we've gotten shaken up by our circumstances today. And so we're looking for ways to find some comfort. And it is, I hope, some amount of comfort to be connected online and to have the services and to have these kind of sp devotionals through the days. Um, but certainly one of the things that I'm seeing people reacting to and really becoming quite human in their reactions to it is this need to be connected physically with people and the weather has changed and so people are like i gotta get out i gotta do the things um and i need to be out there and with the people and do you know I, it, and it just everything about our human experience tells us as summer is happening and things it's just wrong to stay home it's just wrong to take these precautions but I, I fundamentally reject the absolutes on this, that you have to absolutely stay home and take every precaution, unless of course you are severely immunosuppressed. And if that's the case, please, please do take all the precautions no matter what. But there may be a, an in-between space and that we can start working toward um, because even if you're tired of COVID and we're all tired of COVID, we're all tired of COVID. No one is not tired of COVID. But even if you're tired of COVID, um, COVID's not tired of you. <laughs> COVID is not tired of us. Um, we haven't had enough people to get it, to have the herd immunity. So, you know, it's a thing. So we have to deal with it. But how do we maintain our humanity and our human connection while we do this? Um, and so this is really the the transition I have because theologically God is always with us and we're never alone but we're also in incarnated right we have a soul that's in a body and that body has needs and has wants and has desires um, and one of those desires is to be connected with other people and so 
Well, this may take a while. I'm trying to figure out, and I'm working with members of the leadership team to do it. I'm trying to figure out how to get us from over here where everybody's hiding in their houses to um, safe spaces where we can gather together in some kind of way without it being like a, everybody go back to church now. And there's a whole movement, y'all, of, of people that are just rebelling um, uh, of like, we have to open the church by Pentecost. And it reminds me of when I was a child um, and my mother would say, you know, people would be having a party or doing something to break the rules. And they would be like, if you want to, if you want to be one of us and if you want to be part of our group, then you have to break the rules with us. You know, and my mother would say, oh, you want to go to that party? Well, what, I mean, if, if all your friends jumped off the cliff, would you jump too? And I feel like that's what I'm seeing right now in this, in this movement in the church um, to, we have to be open by Pentecost and things like that. Um, hello, if everybody jumped off a cliff, would you jump too? I'm not, I have no intention to, because I, I really think that this is a time for creative conversation on how we can maintain human community in positive and life affirming and soul tending kinds of ways, holy conversations and covenant discipleship, very Westland, while at the same time protecting our people and doing things that respect our situation, while at the same time we're also honoring our very human need to be together. So I'm trying to figure all that out and I covet your prayers to make that happen <clears throat> because I'm having individual conversations with people now um, to, to kind of talk that through. And over the next two or three months, I'm gonna try to figure out what that would look like um, and I'll keep you in the loop on it so that you, you're aware, but um, I also, in addition, and I hope you are too, and I hope you'll share with me what's happening with you with this. Um, another thing that I'm doing is finding comforting things to watch. I have not been watching the news. I get plenty of it on my Facebook feed. I don't need to subject myself to the ongoing onslaught of the emotional triggers encapsulated in a news broadcast. Um, I, th I think that there's enough sources of news now where I can get the gist and I can read certain articles from trusted sources without having to just get mad <laughs> all the time or scared all the time. Um, I do that for my psycho-spiritual health. I encourage you to think about that, to think about limiting how much <clears throat> you're letting the news control what's happening with you. Um, and so if you can consider that, that would be great. Another thing I'm doing is reaching out and trying to find positive things to watch. Um, one of the things that I'm trying to do is create positive content for you on our Facebook page and um, church sites. And I, I, I hope that you're getting stuff out of that. I hope that's a positive space for you. That's what I'm hoping for it to be and intending for it to be and creating. Um, but I also have things that I like to watch. So I'm a southerner, right? And um, <clears throat> there's this cooking show now they're starting on the yards again you can hear it in the background but anyway there's a cooking show that there's this uh lady cooking with uh betty gant oh my gosh i love this woman she's from andalusia alabama and she's fantastic because it feels like as i'm listening to her and i'm watching her cook these these kind of horrible things to eat um but yummy so yummy as I'm watching her cook these things, I'm just drooling. And I'm thinking about home. I'm thinking about being in mama's kitchen and being in my grandmother's kitchen and my aunt's kitchen and things like that. And, and she's telling stories and you feel like you're just in the kitchen with her. And so it's shows like that. Well, we could watch a cooking show on the Food Network, but it's shows like that that do something about human connection for me that's deep and resonating. Um, and that kind of nurtures my inner child. So I want you to think about, and I'm encouraging, inviting you to think about the ways that you are one, trying to figure out how to do in smart ways, the connections um, that we need as humans in this new COVID world. And two, what are you intentionally watching in your life um, online or other things or stopping watching so that your soul is somehow nurtured and you're smiling 
um, you're, maybe it's a show like Some Good News by John, I think it's Brzezinski or something. Um, but how are you intentionally putting in good things into your mind and into your heart so that you can keep your spirits up and therefore keep your immunity up um, and keep your life moving in positive ways so that you can really deeply be grateful and love God and love your neighbor as yourself. So if you can really focus on those things, I think it will help a lot what you're having to go through, um, what we're all having to go through in, in the grief and the complex grief that we're going through right now. Um, but I encourage you to do that and really think thoughtfully about it. And I would love it if you shared with me some of the things that you like to watch. And I'll try to put the link um, to this sh cookie show that I'm talking about so I can kind of share with you what it was like growing up um, in the wiregrass of area of Alabama and what people sounded like and what yummy yet nutritionally horrible things they cooked. And I really wish I could have some, but I'm not going to do it. Um, so, yeah, what's encouraging you today? please share it with me. God bless you on your day. I hope you have a great rest of your Friday and I love you and I'm praying for you. So hang in there. Bye y'all.